Hey everybody, so I was out and about today and I hit up the thrift store and found this TV for 10 bucks and we're going to convert it to a oscilloscope or vector scope, one of the two, wherever you see it. Um, to do this, uh, you do need a mixing board or some type of way of mixing a left and right frequency, two frequencies. Uh, one frequency just makes a circle, so you'll need uh, two frequencies. I use a two frequency generator here. Um, and then that's hooked into the board on separate uh, channels. And then I can left and right those. Uh, that's hooked up to amplifier. And if I want to go out of the amplifier or any of these inputs, it's just like a speaker. So I use this uh, cable here. It's a left and a right speaker. So we're going to hook it up to the black is our positive and yellow is our ground. And on the left, we have red is our positive and green is our ground. So that's just like a left and right speaker. So that's how we're going to hook that, that into the TV. Now on these TVs, that's a newer version, so it just has a clip in here. Uh, this clip goes back to the tube, and it's the only thing you're going to need to do. There's other cool stuff in here if you want it. If the TV breaks and the static driver is still good, you can get a VST driver, uh, wrap the coil around here. It's three wires. Uh, one goes in the center splice together then you loop all three wires through this uh through this little metal thing here it's got a little plastic enclosure and this is your main high voltage right here and these two are your other connectors to the high voltage so it'd be like when you wanted to make plasma you would use this wire and probably the black wire uh, more than likely or the red looks orange actually on the bottom there is also all the pins that hold this together there's several pins down there um, these two wires could be the voltage supply I uh, like 19 volts from a computer or whatever you could hook up to here and turn this into a little plasma driver but for all the hassle you might as well just go on Amazon and get yourself a, a flyback driver a flyback driver would be this plus the driver and it's all ready to go you just need the power supply and you can make plasma experiments with that but if you had an old tv and you wanted to make one that's what you would use and we're not worried about that we're worried about this wires right here these four so this is acting like a left and a right speaker here so what basically when we unplug this the tv will go from having just static so turn this on did have a problem where it didn't want to turn on earlier so give it a second and see that it has static and that's all we care about and we turned it off and we come back here to this again and we unplug this wire right here now this is going to act like your left and right speaker attaching into the tube itself, making uh, the, the different uh, waves. So I'm gonna turn this back on and hope for the uh, little white dot to turn on. Should take a little bit. So there it is, we got the little white dot right there. So now that we're, one's gonna be a left and one's gonna be a right. So this is where we have to be a little careful and turn off the TV and we're going to splice our speaker wires into this. Now since I soldered my little connectors here I can kind of just push them in. So if you bear with me a moment here, I'm going to put my phone on this uh, stand. Okay, so we got these wires 
I'm going to use, I'm going to assume, because I know a little bit of about electricity, obviously this is a ground wire, then more than likely the yellow is usually always a ground wire, and blue is usually positive, and red is usually always positive. So when we go to hook up the speaker, it's going to be a positive and negative, just like you're hooking up a speaker. So we have our speakers up there at everything's unplugged or turned off up there. So we want to make sure we turn off the amplifier before doing this so you don't short anything out on your amplifier either. So I'm just going to push these little wires into their, their little slots. So we have a red. Let's just use the red and black as our left and right. That's what we have up there tied into the amplifier. So we're going to hook up the red doesn't really fit in there very well so we'll bend bend the wire over like this so you bend the wire over onto the cable and then we take the little thing and it should fit in there with the cable now so we're gonna make the red that one and then we're gonna turn the black into the blue which is probably the uh, up and down or left to right I'm gonna bend these wires over and then we're gonna hook the yellow to yellow and the green to green, kind of is all color coordinated. Don't usually get that lucky. Usually it's, you're gonna have to figure out ways of, of color coordinating things yourself. But this just happened to work out that I cut this telephone. This is a thicker telephone cable I'm using as speaker wire. These things aren't really fitting in here very, very well. So hopefully we'll make it enough contact to where uh, we'll see some results real quickly. I'm going to probably cut these wires and uh, solder them on there together just so I don't have like this kind of thing coming out. Right now I'm kind of getting a little irritated with this thing that wants to just keep pop following out, but we're gonna hold this here and we're gonna turn everything on and see how this works out. So first you're gonna turn on the amplifier it's already hooked up to the mixing board and we will play um, two frequencies at the same time at a lower volume. We don't want to get too crazy. You don't want to turn up the amplifier too loud. You don't want to turn up the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the mixing board too loud because it will blow up the TV usually. So they're only like so many watts. So you really want to see how that's going to work. So let's see if we're making any good contact here to get anything. And I'm not sure if I'm turned up on the amplifier. Because we should be getting a left and a right result. And we're not getting any results. So that means that these wires aren't connected in here very well. So let's try pushing them in. Actually, I'm not even plugged into the right one. I'm sorry. Let's plug this one into here. The red one into there. Green into there and the yellow into there. I kind of saw move a little bit. Honestly, I'm about ready to just splice these wires myself. So let's see what happens. Sometimes just because it's a yellow wire and I have a yellow wire doesn't mean that that's anything, you know. And you don't want to cut all the wires at the same time, especially if you've got it on like this. You want to, <laughs> you want to cut one wire at a time. If you cut them all, you, you risk shorting, shorting it out. So I cut the uh, little thing off here. Now I'm going to splice these wires real quickly, or at least test to see which one works with which frequency. And I more than likely am 
doing something here with these wires. Just gonna strip these wires back. I'm gonna use the green and the blue at first and try that. So let's see if we get any results from hooking up the green to my speakers hooked up to green and red. So we'll do green and red. And then I got little wire nuts to put on there. You need some of these sometimes just so you don't cross any of the wires over because if any of them touch each other, they'll short out certain things. And let's hook this uh, red one up. So, I could hook the blue one up, it doesn't matter. It's not getting any results there. Not there, and not there. So, we know that that's not the proper wiring. This is always the uh, fun part about trying to do all this. I'm an idiot. And that would help if I did that. So I didn't have my settings on the amplifier on correctly. So let's try this again. I have too many inputs on my setups over here and sometimes it gets a little confusing. Sorry about that. That's what happens when you hook up everything all at once. So we should get some results now. So I don't want to cross over my speakers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this one and do it right. So I'm gonna use the green and the red wire from back here on the TV. And I'll show you guys once I'm done. And so I'm gonna hook up the red wire and we should get a little bit of results here. something okay let's hook up this uh, blue to the black and there we got something there you the wiring in a second it's really not that complicated it's just like hooking up a speaker wire whoops Don't do that and there we go so now we got this circle here, okay? And if you want to hear it, I could just turn that on so you can kind of hear it, what's going on. And let's check to see if the left and right works. Kind of does. We're on lower frequencies. This really works better with higher frequencies. So let's turn up the frequencies.
at this point move the panning around since my speakers on a mono uh, situation the, the frequencies you might not hear Amplifying one channel stretches it out, stretching it out the other way amplifies the other way, and changing the pan to the same side would just be a line, but then opposite would switch it this way. Another thing is, is that my mixing board has delay on it, so you can add like delay to one of the channels and stuff, and this is where you can kind of really augment frequencies and do like weird stuff with them with delays. So this is adding a delay, and you'll see that it, it can twist things around and move things in different uh, thing. Let's see if we can. It still sounds almost like a telephone. <laughs> but you could see in the video that uh, it manipulates the wave a little bit more. If I mess with the settings on the delay, you can kind of, This is like modulating now, like if I was using a keyboard or something. A keyboard would, would be able to manipulate this you know if i hook a keyboard up to this and use the modulator on the keyboard then i could do things like this because it's like a delay and phase shifting and stuff like that would manipulate the waves so in a lot of sense like you're looking at not just how a wave works but how even like in different situations how something would reverberate or kind of get really uh if I turn this off, it's a little bit clearer, maybe. Yeah, so it's kind of cool to mess with delay and the panning. See what you can kind of do. So far, we haven't changed any of the frequencies. Just messing with, like... The delay can be real sensitive. But you can get some really interesting... Uh, things going on with it this is like you know going in this way and this will come down this way uh, if I change the frequencies we're at 300 and something since everybody loves to see uh, 432 might as well go to that one and this is 432 Right there with uh, 247, but we're going to change that one. Let's go up to like 500, or let's go up to, let's go 516, I believe it is. I don't know all the numbers all the time off the top of my head. But this is 516 and 432. And if I want to make it bigger, I have to mess with some of the volume here. Because this is a higher frequency, once again, everything kind of shrinks down. Uh, 
these these things these situations you can always show how frequencies get larger if this is 16 hertz 116 hertz uh, 216 hertz and 432 and then we're going up to 316 and you're gonna see how it just starts getting smaller and smaller the higher I go and that's why you need to change the pan size of frequencies when you're looking at them in water too because when you're looking at them in water, they, 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 it's same same circumference of things that are around. So if I'm amplifying something, I'm making it larger. It's just like the lighting. If I'm amplifying the light, I'm making the image larger in the water. So there's a huge difference of like the way you control the lighting on the water, how you control the the depth of the color of the water with different dyes or charcoal or different things and different mediums, uh, different fluids, that all makes a big, huge difference, um, especially how, how this all behaves. You know, it's still the, the, the surroundings that is making its initial patterns and its, its flow, but how thick something is is how it will behave and move on top of each other. So something thinner is going to be able to move much more faster than something thicker, obviously. So, you know, you can manipulate things like we're still at a delay here. If I turn the delay off, it's just a, let's see if we turn the delay completely off here. And that was uh All right, so the delay is off and you can see that even these two frequencies kind of are weird, but they're really close in value, that's why. 216 is a octave of 432. So these are sharing the same, that's why it's not moving. Uh, it's sharing the same uh, value. Only difference is, is you'll see these little line patterns like spinning around with it. If I manipulate the uh, left and right, and I center the left and right, and you'll get see that the circle still has, let me see if I can show you, because I'll have to turn this down a little bit, and see that there's this little glitch over here. It's not a perfect circle with these two frequencies, but if I turn one of the frequencies down or I turn one of the frequencies up and it manipulates it so there has to be a balance even in, in when you're mixing separate frequencies into something this balance is better to resonate in a circular pan because it's it's making an elliptical thing so the frequencies right now are set at if I you can hear it So if you, I'm at one level as the higher frequency obviously is a higher volume. This is controlling the higher frequency. And this is controlling the off frequency, but the same octave, 216. So if I change that to like 108, which is also an octave, whoops. go 108 and you see this manipulation once again got to turn down 108 if I turn 108 up it manipulates it but look we can make two circles out of it and three so this is actually still a good pattern especially if I pan the frequency and you'll see that I can move and shape how that that actually is working you know how this wave is working on top of each other 432 and uh, 108 so once again this is the octave of each other if I change one little slight frequency off of this it's gonna just manipulate it so that's 106 no 109 110 and as I go up 
it's gonna get faster and faster and sometimes freeze again in different ranges like this is 118 you'll see this shadow thing coming out here this is a, a delay because the frequencies are catching up to each other uh, you'll see it go faster and faster and slower and slower as I go up. See, this is still 123, 124. Things look like they go forwards and backwards like that. This is one frequency and this is a lower frequency. And this is kind of how you can control rotation, especially with magnetics and stuff like that. You're going to be able to use polarity uh, to change things around like negatives and positives and then at the same time frequencies will allow you to manipulate the rotation factors and stuff like that. As I you can see that it just keeps on kind of repeating itself I'm just using single frequencies, but look what's happening is that the same patterns keep on repeating and it's just getting smaller and smaller. Now if I change the value over one and I'm going to go up higher faster and now you're going to see it start to shrink more and more. Now we're up in the 900 hertz range almost a thousand hertz right around here you can see we're just getting smaller and smaller and smaller this is why i kind of never understood why cymatics always people build them with big giant speakers and big giant pans and everything when you can actually only show the value of that that size of frequencies which is just basic one hertz to like 13 or 14 hertz really I mean after that you're kind of you know you need to change the size of some things in order to see it because you can obviously see that this is a lower frequency at 120 but in water 120 is very high so you don't even you can't even uh, if you want to see 432 hertz in water you're looking at a cap of water that's like a tiny little like chapstick lid or something uh, some of my new pens I'm building uh, I am down to 10 millimeters so 10 millimeters is about a quarter inch pan um, and it's just for just those higher frequencies because of this how everything shrinks if you want to see what the behavior is doing within its surrounding then it has to be able to be able to do that within the, the circumference and the size of the diameter of the of of that frequency you know, obviously if you change the shape it changes the whole value it changes the whole system and the whole order but if you're looking at things from a circular perspective and and how a lot of things are read with frequencies as waves and oscilloscopes and vectorscopes and looking at current and the way uh, currents work with frequencies uh, this is a good way to kind of achieve that on a really cheap minimal level you know my my oscilloscope cost me about 300 and something bucks which is nothing compared to how much they really go for and this is a tv and it only cost me ten dollars uh, but i like i said i <laughs> i've done my share in breaking these to try to figure out what wires to actually do because every time i watch something it was the wrong thing so yeah so you can really manipulate a lot of different things look at a lot of different things try different effects with the like i said delays and and stuff like that when you start to add them you can manipulate these frequencies with modulations the modulations can do a lot more crazier things And turning one up, turning one down. Like I said, it will raise the value of those. Panning each way will turn things differently. So you really get to see a lot of different things when you start to mess with different kinds of reverb, different kinds of sustaining and 
delays, uh, being a musician for a long time, I used to use, uh, make my own little sound equipment and basically just rewire electronics to make uh, them messed up sounding, you know? And that was a lot of fun. I wish I had something like this <laughs> to visualize some of the weird stuff that I was making back then. But these are kind of cool. You can really do a lot with simple, you know, technology and learn a lot about it, you know. Learn about how everything kind of works and behaves because that's the kind of point of everything. You learn how something behaves and something acts, even in electronics. You kind of learn how something is behaving within yourself. It's really, there's no difference to me. After a while, I just, you know, understood that I didn't have to, you know, think about things like on a way of a language, I can think more on the terms of observation because every time I observe something, I'm understanding it on a different level. The more things I try, you know, unfortunately I break a lot of things, but the more things I try, the more experiences I have, the more I can actually learn about technology and I learn about myself and a lot of things that I wouldn't normally actually think about. And then I do because I'm connecting frequencies to everything, my thoughts, my life, the things I hear, even that little cricket in the background. Everything to me now is frequencies and they're all intertwining with each other. And it's how I amplify myself or I turn myself, tune myself down a little bit and balance everything around me out to become something. You go all crazy and you go all, you know, like nuts. It's just going to be like, you know, adding a bunch of crazy echoes and different delays and stuff. And if you don't know how to control those things you lose control of a lot of things, you know, and if those things are frequencies and your mind is frequencies, you're really kind of losing your, your sense of your mind and your body and you end up hurting yourself, maybe others and stuff. So after a while, I just started realizing that a lot of things aren't worth the, the emotions I feel because those are defined things that I'm judging things off of and feeling that way off of. But the reality was is that these are frequencies and I'm only defining them because that was the language that I was taught to define it as. Which is nothing wrong with that because we need to learn forms of communication. But we all feel things from each other and we all can work together and do things with each other. And that doesn't always require language. I can teach people how to do things just with my hands or showing you how to do it without words as long as... You were physically there and I showed you physically how to do it. Then you would understand it physically and you can do it. It wouldn't be any different. That's the, you know, kind of cool part about communication is we don't always have to use words. And a lot of times, you know, people understand that our behaviors speak louder than words. The way you act and hold yourself my you know sometimes my boss will tell me i look all like i'm pouting and stuff <laughs> i'm like bro i'm just tired <laughs> the, the, the look on my face i'm sure looks like that but it's just that i i'm so exhausted or i'm tired uh you know i can't like just be all cheery you know so you got to understand where you're coming from and not just give an excuse understand where your body's coming from and understand where everything it is and you can explain to people in a way that's not going to be make you feel like you're just giving an excuse because quite honestly when you're fatigued or you're tired the mind doesn't work correctly you don't think correctly when you're tired and that's the that you know when you when you understood when i understood that that was the key to getting rid of depression was that I wasn't sleeping proper. I wasn't doing things routine. So I was just getting a little bit of sleep, not eating. And all that stuff was making my mind do things that I wasn't aware of until you actually, you're kind of like stuck in some zone that you think that you're in and actually you're not. Once again, you're just in your mind a lot. 
And the more you sit there and dwell on the mind, the more you're just going to keep on making excuses, keep on making things up. And those are just words and ideas because you're trying to understand yourself. And unfortunately, you're not understanding yourself the more you think about it. That's what I learned about all this. When I started this, it was because I wanted to rewire my brain. I wanted to build something amazing like my my vortex frequency chamber and, and make that into you know, something that I can go into and rewire my brain with frequencies and magnetics and plasma and light and everything. And I still want to build it. But honestly, learning how to do all this stuff myself, like trial and error, that retuned my brain just doing it. I, that's why I didn't have to build the, the vortex frequency chamber because I just kind of became the vortex frequency chamber myself. <laughs> Uh, without like wanting it without trying because I was trying to understand all this to build that but in trying to understand all this to build something very complicated that you understand only within yourself intuitively and you go out and try to reach out to the world and and understand it from a technological point of view and terminology and all that none of that makes sense to me I, I didn't understand it from that that way I only understand it that it's in my mind and that I can build it as long as I understand what I'm building and how those things function and behave. I know what I need it to do as long as I know how it works. If you understand how something works and you understand how something behaves, then you can put those functions together to do things. And that's no different than your mind itself, the way you do things in your life. And that was all the connection I needed to understand that I was not like thinking correctly a lot of times and, and I'm thinking by language and I'm thinking the defiant I'm thinking by judgment I'm thinking by all these things and I still do not like I don't it's now that I recognize it quite quickly you know and then I'm like okay I don't have to you know dwell on this or I, I can change this because it's like changing a frequency and actually doing that in your mind is changing a frequency because your thoughts are frequencies you are actually changing the frequencies as if I'm changing the frequencies right here, you know. If I'm doing things and I'm, I'm changing frequencies within myself, I'm going to be doing all these different things to myself, you know. If, I'm, if I don't understand what I'm doing, then I could be messing myself up more. But honestly, I didn't understand what I was doing and I didn't mess up myself. <laughs> Sure, I electrocuted myself plenty of times and broke a lot of stuff. But in the end, I, I, I learned way more about how something works when it breaks than if it worked. If, I, if something I build worked, I kind of probably wouldn't understand why it worked. Because it just worked. But when something breaks, it seems like I understand why it broke. And then therefore I can fix that and move past that to make it work. And that's kind of weird because it's, it's like when things automatically work for me sometimes, I don't always understand why. Just like this TV thing, I tried to make bunches of these and I watched videos on how to do it. And then it annoyed me because I kept on breaking them and you can't find these TVs everywhere. These aren't just something you just find uh, tube TVs anymore. So... <laughs> When I, when I find them, I'm like, okay, I want to do this. And, and it just didn't work. I kept breaking them because the videos were too complicated, overcomplicated, explaining a bunch of stuff that wasn't necessary. It's like, just give me the how to do it, and that's it. Like, this video <laughs> is probably the longest video I made in a long time. I usually am used to making long videos, but this is quite a long video now. Um... Some people will watch it all the way to this point, and some people won't. You know, doesn't you know? I don't do this always for everybody else's sake. I always do this to record what I'm doing or the moment I'm doing it, and it's pretty spontaneous. A lot of it's intuitive. You know, I I just do things randomly, so it's just the way they work for me better that way. I, I can, I can can focus more if I if I don't think about it so much so 
this is how you make a cool oscilloscope, vector scope, whatever you want to call it, man. Sometimes the way things are called or I don't understand all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I just like to build things and make things and I'm not the best at explaining it. I'm pretty good at explaining how it relates to myself and others and nature and life and because a lot of things in life are just very simple. Uh, humans just seem to overcomplicate them unnecessary thinking that they're going to actually achieve something by learning or reading or doing something that's going to give them some connection to something when all the connections and everything we've already experienced everything it's just all within you all you're doing is ever having an experience to remember something and when you remember it you learned it so life is nothing more than just remembering everything that we've already actually achieved it's why we keep on repeating it. We're supposed to be making it better and better. And little by little we do. And it's not the wild, wild west, you know. <laughs> I'm sure in some countries it is, unfortunately. But here, you know, where I am, and it's not. So I have to take advantage of that situation and do what I can to achieve what I can. Because those opportunities are all around me. And there's no sense in me wasting that, those opportunities and doing nothing about it. This is why I do things, is because I got tired of listening to people or reading something. And it's like, I didn't understand it, you know? I don't have no technological understanding of things, you know? It was, I'm just intuitively like an artist and a musician. So you understand things when you make music, you just play it. You just come up with stuff. You just keep on adding layers and layers and layers. And that's what I've done. I've just added layers and layers and layers of myself over technology. So it's, it's different for me than most people with that study technology or understand it from its physics or, you know, quantum physics points of views. To me, these are just labels. I, I don't understand those things. And to me, it's just all the same, like, thing, just manipulated under a different behavior, different sit surroundings, a different kind of actions and stuff. That's, that's really all it's doing, because this does this right here doesn't mean it's going to do this everywhere, you know? And that's the thing we need to realize, is that things are infinite. They're so infinite that it's mind-boggling that we can't really put our hand heads around how infinite things really are and it's like we only stand a small tiny fraction of layers you know we call things things but they're not actually things if we actually called it for what it was we might understand it a little more like we're not breathing air to me this isn't oxygen all around me this is just thin layer of water you know i, I live in water and and i am water and why you know why would we separate it and call it air when it's not it's just just the thinner layers of of different types of of density of water you know and when you really understand it like that you can understand how pressure works how atmosphere works how everything kind of has these flows and rotations of frequencies all around binding them together physically you know, there's no, like, s vacuum in space or everything would just get sucked up into space. It just doesn't work like that. These things don't don't work in the sense of always s contraction. And, and even though they are moving up and down, they're not always moving up and down because there is no up and down. This is a perception of where we are in our moment and our time and this space and this atmosphere and this planet and everything here that affects what we do as an up and down thing but the universe is vast with with no up and down you know you can't think things that way but yet if you think that things are just floating out there you're absolutely wrong things are falling they're moving very very fast and they're going through very large cycles of rotation just like this 
And it takes eons and eons and eons and eons to, to make one cycle. You know, something we cannot even grasp as humans when we only live a hundred years max. You know, we have to start understanding that we've lived millions of years and that we've been around for millions of years and that we aren't just humans. You know, this is just a physical form that allows us to experience frequencies, allows us to feel frequencies, allows us to become our surroundings and our experiences of those surroundings. That's what that this all really is. Your life is about evolving frequencies to become harmony like this. If I tune them and turn them and they just become chaos. I play music on here. It looks chaotic even though it sounds beautiful to your ears. On, on, the, on the spectrum of, of waves, it's, it's chaos. And it's an order of chaos, though, that we can't see like this, where there's just balance of simplicity. The universe is a balance of simplicity that we need to understand that that's the whole thing. What we've created is chaos, and we use chaos to evolve simplicity. It's, it's not super complicated. We just make it complicated when we place a lot of things that we want to learn we want to understand and yet all we have to do is go out and do things and experience things it doesn't really matter what you do you'll learn from it and you'll be able to adapt that learning into your own life and when you do that that's understanding yourself and others and all kinds of things it changes your behaviors changes the people around you's behaviors this is how things work it's how people are easily manipulated into the bullshit of today that these are people with one surroundings. They don't have nowhere to go. They have nothing to do, nothing to listen to, nothing to read, nothing to... All these things. So they just give in to whatever their surroundings gives them. And they accept it. It's how someone would become naively racist. How someone comes naive at anything. You know, they don't understand otherwise. It's not entirely their fault. Their surroundings raise them. Their surroundings gave them the experience. They're just filters. Humans are just filters to experience frequencies. We label them as words, but they're not words. Words don't make reality. Frequencies do. Your mind does. And if you understand that the mind is frequencies and everything that you define as a frequency, you understand how to tune reality. And look through it. Understand that you're in water. You know, like you're not in air, you know, there's, you, you are not understanding things correctly when, when you understand things scientifically almost. It's just almost pointless sometimes when I, when I think about science. All they want to do is separate everything and keep on trying to separate these layers. But we're already part of all these layers. We'll understand it when we stop trying to do that and we start becoming it. When you become something, you understand it. When you sit there and force it upon it, only certain people are going to understand it. And that's the problem in the world. Only certain people understand things. Because these things are forced upon everybody. Frick. This video is 50 minutes long. Sorry, people. But that's what you get when I build crazy shit. Then I have to explain how I do it without thinking about it. So, yeah. Speaker wires into the back of the TV. Four wires. Not a big deal. But really fun to use. 